Story has it that there once existed a powerful angel by the name of Elosis in the celestial realms of heaven, where harmony and beauty reigned supreme. His dazzling wings shone brighter than any other, and his presence inspired awe among his celestial siblings. Elosis was a shining example of integrity and justice who was born amidst the magnificence of creation. In order to prevent any evil force from invading the sacred realm, Elosis was tasked with guarding the boundaries of heaven. With his sword held high and his spirit immovable, he performed his task with unrelenting determination. The name Elosis, which stood for Fierce Warrior, in the celestial language, was a symbol of his courage and strength. He was adored by his fellow angels, who respected him for his steadfastness and dedication. Many of Elosis's other angels had become close friends, and they shared in the endless joys of heaven. They would fly through the air, their laughter resonating in the celestial spheres as they luxuriated in the unending splendor of their heavenly abode. But over time, a seed of unhappiness started to germinate within Elosis. He desired something greater than the idyllic life of God he had always known. He yearned for a feeling of purpose that went beyond his current position because the monotony of his angelic responsibilities bore heavily on his soul. Elosis dared to express his concerns to the archangels, the celestial beings in charge of overseeing the affairs of heaven, on a fateful day. He expressed his restlessness, wanting to discover new worlds and take on challenges that pushed him to the maximum. The kind and enlightened archangels paid close attention to what he had to say. The archangels led Elosis to travel to the mortal realm because they recognized the noble nature of his goals. He was given the important job of directing and guarding humanity, which they entrusted upon him. It was a chance to understand the difficulties of mortal life and see the failings and successes of the souls that lived on the earthly realm. Elosis thus made his way from the majestic heights of heaven to the world of mortals with the blessings of his heavenly brothers. He veiled his celestial splendor by taking the shape of a mortal man and assimilating into society. In this persona, he accepted the pleasures and pains of human existence, letting himself get fully enmeshed in the fabric of life. Elosis moved among men, giving advice and consolation to those who were in need. He helped the sick, guarded the defenseless, and consoled the grieving. Many people admired him for his kindness and intelligence and just being in his company gave them hope and brightness. But when Elosis learned more about the human condition, he started to see the sinister side of people. He came across evil that was all-pervasive, greedy, and merciless. His celestial nature was put to the test as a result of the weight of these experiences, which weighed hard on him. Elosis struggled with a mounting sense of disappointment as he tried to comprehend the intricacy of mortal existence. His unshakable belief in the inherent goodness of people started to falter when he noticed the striking difference between the celestial regions and the material earth. His previously solid conviction became clouded by doubt as it seeped into his heart. He stumbled as a result of his internal anguish. His angelic light was marred by an evil seed that had crept up inside of him. Elosis, a fallen angel who had previously been a shining example of goodness, started to wonder where he fit into the larger scheme of creation. Elosis slide into the depths of darkness and fall from grace were eventually a result of this internal conflict. Since Elosis lived in the depths of the underworld, where shadows danced and evil flourished, his once brilliant celestial entity gave in to the temptation of the night and accepted his new life as a demon. Elosis took great pleasure in the chaos and corruption that characterized the mortal world. His deeds bore witness to the extent of his evilness. Elosis planned his evil deeds, creating a web of deceit and havoc with his celestial wisdom and cunning. He delighted in the misery of people, taking pleasure in their anguish and hopelessness. He was now motivated by an unquenchable desire for power and control and no longer by moral ideals. He appeared from the shadows, his demonic form decked with emblems of evil and shrouded in darkness. His formerly magnificent wings were now frayed and bent, mirroring the bent character of his spirit. 
He set out to sow the seeds of strife and instability among people while a cunning smirk played across his lips. His first malicious deed was to insinuate evil ideas and sow seeds of suspicion in the brains of powerful people. Kings, queens, and other dignitaries were all persuaded by his compelling speech. Alosis took great pleasure in the succeeding battles and wars, savoring the bloody rivers that marred the mortal realm. He took great pleasure in dividing families, pitting siblings against one another, and fostering animosity among close relatives. Alosis delighted in the broken ties and broken hearts he left behind, thriving on the devastation of love and oneness. But his wickedness didn't end there. Alosis preyed on the weak and defenseless, taking advantage of their anxieties and vulnerabilities. He lured them into his grasp with deceptive promises of strength and achievement. Once captured, he delighted in their mental instability and torture. Alosis also took great pleasure in corrupting learning and knowledge. He used his influence over intellectuals and wise men to turn their search for the truth into a maze of lies and deceit. The once enlightened brain's turn became propagandist for his evil cause, disseminating his toxic ideas and warping the very nature of knowledge. Alosis strengthened with each evil deed, his influence engulfing the mortal realm like a virus. Those who dared to acknowledge him muttered in hushed tones that his name had become a byword for terror and hopelessness. Alosa's evildoing grew more and more virulent over the decades. Pulling the strings of empires and nations, he delighted in the annihilation of civilizations. His heinous acts left behind wounds on the globe, scars that reverberated with the cries of people he had wronged and caused suffering. But there was always a glimmer of hope even in the worst of circumstances. People stood against Alosa's tyranny and refrained from his temptations. These courageous individuals battled the forces of darkness in an effort to recover what had been lost, led by the light of righteousness. However, Alosis persisted in his determination. His wickedness knew no limits, and he delighted in the ongoing conflict between right and wrong. He became more powerful with each triumph, his presence enveloping the globe. Alosis, a fallen angel who had previously been a source of light, now personified pure evil. He was far from finished with his reign of darkness, and the mortal realm shook in dread of the horrors he would unleash next. Now, Alosis, the 63rd spirit, is known as Aloser or Aloser in the Pseudomonarchia Demonum. Aloser's look is different from how he is portrayed in the Lesser Key of Solomon, despite sharing the same status as a duke. The second version defines Aloser as an entity with his own unique features and characteristics, in contrast to the previous text's depiction of him as a fire-breathing, The name Aloser is well known in the large field this of illustrates demonology, how demonology because it appears has changed in a number throughout of time and how different such books as the legendary have interpreted certain demons Solomon. in different ways. Pseudomonarchia demonum the Liber and Liber Spiritual claims that Aloser reappears demon, as Allegor which frequently Allegor. takes the appearance of Alosis a strong duke that possesses a variety of abilities and duties, but with an entirely different frequently portrayed of skills. In the he lesser is portrayed as a spear-wielding knight Alosis appears as the 50 second for combat. He Allegor takes the form is of a terrifying soldier with a lion's head making who rides a horse and exhales plans. fire. He Duke rules Alosis over 30 legions to be well-versed in the liberal acting sciences as their leader and, and the arts of astronomy. And he it's interesting to note that the Libera Fishiorum Spiritum contains a duplicate entry in which Alosis appears as Algor, acting as their leader and directing their evil schemes. In this situation, the spirit known as Orients, or Orients, is in charge of him. Algor also boasts a special talent for winning over aristocrats, which gives him sway over the elite. Rudd, a novelist and magician, tells an intriguing story in which Eloser and the angel Imamaya, one of the Shemhamphorask angels, fight in combat. This implies a struggle between divine and demonic energies, with rival forces vying to outrank one another. The complexity of demonology and its changing mythology are reflected in Elosa's multifarious nature throughout these grimoires. Thank you for your support.